So, Tabs, what is the Cambridge Mathematics Framework? Well, what a question, Fran. This is the Cambridge Mathematics Framework. This is a landscape of mathematical ideas or experiences um, that we call waypoints and the connections between them. OK, and can you tell me something about how the waypoints are created? Yes, of course, that's really important. What we do is we try and interpret the educational research in these areas, in these topics, and we then try to pick apart some significant, smaller experiences to create the waypoints and how they connect together. OK, so if this is the overall landscape, can we zoom in? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> OK, all right, this looks extraordinarily detailed. Um, is it, I wonder, possible to look at a particular group of waypoints? So if I was interested in, say, uh, factors and multiples, for instance, could we uh, look at just those from the map? Absolutely we could, and we probably need to, don't we? Because this is quite a lot going on here and it's hard to know where we are and what we're looking at. So yeah, let's do that. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to take away some of the extra colour just to make things a little bit simpler, just so we can see what's going on. Great. And what we can do now is we can find in the framework anything that is to do with factors and multiples. And right. not just those words, but also the ideas that underpin them, the things that feed into those ideas um, and where they're going. Okay. So if we do that. Yep. Here we ah, go. Ah, okay. All right, so rather than looking at all of the detail now, is it possible to isolate just those waypoints that you've highlighted that are to do with this idea? We certainly could. Before we do that, though, just notice how spread out some of these are. And I will point out, we've really zoomed in at this point. There's probably some waypoints that have come up here that we can't quite see at the moment. Oh. This is a really complex thing. And even something as simple as factors and multiples actually spreads out across a long range of development. OK, understood. So let's pull those out and see what they look like. Ah, OK. So this suddenly looks mm. much more manageable in terms of a group of waypoints that you're saying have been selected because of their association with either directly or indirectly. Mm. So if this is one group that tells a story, where does the story start? Right. So there's lots of stories we could tell with any one mathematical idea, but we'll, we'll think about one. What we could do is we could start by looking at the ideas of odd and even numbers here. So some of those really early experiences where we're thinking about what makes two, what makes those shapes, what makes those multiples of two, how are we looking at those, how are we representing those, uh, and where do we see them? Okay, and, and then, oh, and then yeah. what happens next? What's the mm. next part of the story? Right, so next we start actually getting into the idea of factors and multiples. Um, and so we call this little section here seeing factors and multiples. Ah, okay, seeing, can you say a bit more about that? Yeah, I, that word is so important and I love that word because what it is is not just learning a factor is this and a multiple is this, it's about what we see. If we're thinking about the structure of numbers, then we want to know what it looks like. We want to be able to unpick it and, and look at the representations and what that can show us. OK, all right, so you're talking about seeing. I love the fact that we've got um, blue at the start of the map and then it kind of turns into pink, but I'm quite interested in this one that's just behind your head. This mm. one is one of the ones that's, that's dual coloured. Could we zoom in and have a look at that particular waypoint? We certainly can, because that's one of my absolute favourite waypoints. It's called decomposing numbers multiplicatively. OK, as opposed to additively, which right. we're not considering so, in this case. Yeah, when we break numbers apart, we can do it in different ways. And here okay. we're thinking multiplication. And, and if we're zooming into that particular waypoint, what do we see when we get inside? Right, so we've just zoomed into the sort of the landscape at this point. But yes, you're right, we could dive in and have a real look at that, that idea. Ooh, OK. So here we've got some different the icon is a clackerboard for action and that these are mm. student actions these are things that learners yeah, might be doing absolutely they're things you might do things you might see things you might hear in the classroom that tell you that we're experiencing we're developing this sort of idea the the idea of decomposing okay numbers. useful um, i'm intrigued by this picture here could we <laughs> have a more detailed look at that absolutely yes there we go. Oh, oh, OK. This is beautiful. And the colours are intriguing to me, um, although I'm not sure I... Uh, maybe I need to look more carefully before <laughs> I figure out what they're about. But um, 
you were talking about seeing the numbers. I'm seeing some pairs vertically. So if we start from the left-hand side, we've got one bar of 24, and next to it, I haven't counted them, but I'm going to assume there are 24 bars each of size one, and that that goes on. I've got two bars of 12 and then perhaps 12 bars of two. And the, the links between those as factors and multiples represented visually are a lovely way of experiencing <laughs> the properties of those numbers that we're talking about. Mm. Okay, fantastic stuff. All right, so that's just one example of uh, what might be inside a waypoint. Can we yeah. go back to the story and carry on? Of course we can, yes, there we go. So we've thought about maybe at the beginning thinking about odd and even numbers, moving on to thinking about seeing factors and multiples. Well, what comes next? Well, primes. Maybe that's what you were expecting, maybe not. but. Primes have so much to do with factors and multiples. They are a really important part of where this story is going. Right. Well, and for me, the, the colours are beautiful to look at here because they clearly um, um, relate to the parts of the story that you're explaining. Um, I looked at the dual coloured bits last mm. time. I'm interested in this one particularly that's just behind because it's got lots of... Um, lots of it, it strikes me it's a hub. It's mm. got lots of connections coming into it and going out of it. Could we take a look at that one, maybe? Absolutely, yeah. So there we go, that's what that looks like a little bit closer. It's called seeing prime numbers as building blocks. Okay, so again, this seeing. Mm. <laughs> All right, what happens when we zoom into that then? Right, so if we go right inside there, what we get is this. And again, this is just a snapshot of what you can see in here. Right, okay, I'm, I'm gonna go straight this time to this <laughs> amazing looking picture. I can thought we you see might. That? I oh, thought yeah. you might, there we go. Wow, okay, so, uh, Oh, this mm. is beautiful. I um, My eye is drawn to the dotted lines that, mm. that kind of radiate out, yeah, yeah, that do this kind of stretching or scaling, which is what it's making me think, from this um, square at the front, which says two, and that it, I'm guessing maybe the orange square from that is doubled in area, and that the green is doubled again, and that because this one at the outside, the blue one, says multiplied by three, that's tripled in order to make the, the 24 mm. that's the largest square. And yeah. this isn't necessarily how I might have thought about prime factors being building blocks of other numbers. I, you know, uh, this might be new to me. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe you've thought of factor trees and, and various other things that come up. And those are perfectly good as well. But it's what's really nice is to look at how else we can we can right. draw these, how we can, how we can do them differently and what else we can tell when we look at that. Well, and what the variety shows us and, too. Yeah, <clears throat> and look at all the connections now. When you see that diagram, you started doing this. We can start thinking about enlargement and those topics rather than seeing them as separate things. Right, well, and it makes me want to go away and, and redraw this diagram for other numbers mm. and imagine what it would look like, not for 24, but for maybe for prime numbers because I have a feeling I can right. visualize what that might look like before I really thought about it too much. Okay, mm. so that's this delving into the waypoint. Can we go back to the story that you were showing me? So there it this, is. This is the group of waypoints that tell the story of factors, multiples and primes in the first uh -huh. instance, but presumably this isn't the only story in the framework. No, no, absolutely. Of course, if you think back to that really complicated, really detailed diagram we had at the start, just imagine, you could have asked me about anything, any idea, any key term, and we could have pulled those things out, seen what they look like, and found a different story. Maybe we've got one we could tell, maybe there's one we have to sort of pick apart and understand, but we can do that. Superb, okay, and if, um, if instead I wanted to look at the research you talked about earlier, mm. which has created these waypoints for this particular group, is there a way I can do that? Yeah, absolutely, and that's really important because we're saying we've built this by looking at that educational research. We do want to make that available to you. Now, there are a few ways you can do that, but the easiest at the moment would be to have a look at our espressos. Amazing, and these are freely available online? They are, yes. We publish them regularly throughout the year, and if you go on there, you can see everything that's already out there um, and take a read and have a look and get a bit further in there. Fantastic stuff. So this is one way to access the research that underpins the framework um, for free and written in a format that is um, uh, easily accessible for teachers and those who are yep. interested in educational design. But the alternative, of course, is that you look at the framework in its entirety and pick about which story <laughs> you're interested in next. Yeah. Maybe that's for another time then. I think it probably is. <laughs>